Hello, I'm Jose with Free Sky North America. In today's video, we're going to look at setting up and fine tuning a throttle mix for gas and glow planes. There are many different ways to set this up, so I'll cover one of the more popular methods. In this video, we will adjust endpoints for the servo, set up an adjustable low idle, set up a throttle cut for glow planes, and also set up an adjustable high idle. Okay, first we would set up the servo. When installing the servo, ideally you want to have as much servo throw as possible to maximize resolution. Mechanically adjust the linkage to achieve that. You can choose the servo horn size and the hole position to get as close to full travel as possible. Since you have not adjusted the endpoints yet, be very careful when moving the throttle stick near the low or the high position as to not bind your servo. Many will limit the endpoints before they start, but I feel that during this step, just be very cognizant of where the stick is while you are setting it up. Once you are mechanically adjusted, we can now fine tune with the endpoints. Go to Model and Outputs and scroll down to Channel 3, the throttle. Over here, we can adjust the servo direction if we need to, if we need to reverse it. So in this case, let's say that it's that normal is fine. And then now we adjust min and we adjust max for the end points, the end travel. So the question is, which one do you adjust min or max for whichever one? So depending on whether or not your direction is reversed or not, you might have to do min or max for the low. And the easy way to tell is which one is bold. So right now, once I go past the middle and I start going down, you notice that the min is bold. And when I go past the, mid, the middle and go up, then the max is bold. So I know that the min is what I adjust for the low and the max is what I adjust for the high in this particular case. All right, let's go ahead and adjust the min. So I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing it down, ensuring that I am not binding that servo and once I go all the way down now I can go ahead and adjust my min. If you do start to bind you can bring this down a little bit before you go all the way down. So let's go ahead let's just say that I needed more travel so even though I'm at 100% I can go past that so we can go past let's say that we needed to go to 100 and somewhere around there 114.6 and that is with the butterfly or with the throttle slide all the way closed. Return out of that. And now if I want, I can go ahead and adjust the max. So I'm gonna go over here to max, start bringing it up, same thing, look for bind. And if it starts to bind, I can not go all the way up and I can start bringing it back now. And then once I can go all the way up, then I can start going forward until it is max. So this is the throttle all the way open. The endpoints are now set. The full range of the throttle stick is now the full range of the throttle. Next, let's set up an adjustment for low idle. Let's go ahead and hit return a few times until I get back to the model menu. I'll go backwards to the mixes. Click on the mixes and scroll down to the throttle. Enter and hit edit. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do in the throttle mix is to go down here and turn on low position trim. If you're running a glow plane, a gas plane, or even a turbine, you want to use low position trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on, but before I do, let's take a look at the, my, my little graph over here. And if you notice that if I go down all the way right now, it goes all the way to minus 100, where we set the endpoint to be throttle closed all the way. But once I turn on low position trim, Notice that it popped up a little bit, and then now my low is actually above that. So what this did was give me trim ability below and above that point. So now I can go lower or higher. And I pretty much use this now to adjust for my low trim or my low idle. So I use this to adjust my low idle. So if I need to bring it down, I can bring it down. And if I want it, need to bring it up, I can bring it up. All right, next, let's go ahead and set up a throttle cut. For gas planes, 
you would use an ignition switch for your throttle cut. For glow planes, you'll need to close the throttle all the way down till the carb valve is completely closed, and that will kill your motor. So for gas planes, this, this step is not necessary, and you would do this with an ignition kill. All right, so for those of you with glow planes, let's move on. So I'm gonna scroll forward till I get to the throttle cut area. Right now you see that the arrow is pointed sideways. When I click enter, it now activates the throttle cut menus over here. The first item that we have is active condition. So this is where we choose a switch to activate throttle cut. So I'm gonna hit enter and say this switch over here I wanna use for throttle cut. So all the way away from me, will be throttle cut activated. And that is switch position SG up. All right, so there's a couple of items down here for throttle cut and a couple of settings. Um, I'll tell you what I do and then I'll show you what all these things do just so that you understand it. So the way that I run it is I run sticky on and that's it, everything else I leave in default value. But let me explain what this is. So. First of all, the throttle cut has a few safety interlocks. They are great for electric planes that if you were, for example, have throttle cut on, bring your throttle up and then turn off your throttle cut. Watch this. So the throttle cut, you see it's red all the way at the bottom. So right now it just stays at minus 100. But if I was to turn um, off my throttle cut, so I go into throttle active, notice that it stays low. If I start bringing the throttle down, once I get to the trigger value, which is over there at minus 85% as a default, I didn't set that, that's a default, then throttle will activate. So that's great, but for glow planes, that's not really necessary because if the throttle valve is all the way closed, you turn that on, it's not gonna start your motor. You need to actually start your motor physically. So that's not really necessary. One of the ways that you can do that is to come over here and change my trigger value to 100. When you do that, you essentially disable that interlock. So now if I was to throttle up, throttle down. So this works the way that you would think where the switch just turns that on and off. Um, personally, I leave this at minus 100, or I'm sorry, minus 85. So let's go ahead and go back there again. And the only thing I do is I turn on sticky. And let me explain this. So what sticky is. So remember I explained that when, if your throttle cut is engaged and you go up, it will not engage a throttle until your stick is down below a certain point. Um, the other side of it, also it works. So let's just say that throttle is on. Actually, let's go um, throttle cut off, throttle is up. And if I was to press the throttle cut on, so I'm gonna go into throttle cut, it does not turn off until the stick gets below a certain point. So it works the other way around as well. So that for glow planes is not a good idea because you want that throttle cut to turn off regardless of anything, that would be a safety thing. So. If I was to go ahead and turn sticky on, and your engine is on, throttle is up, you hit this button, and it'll just go right off. So it sort of disregards the trigger value going in this direction when throttle is on and you wanna turn the throttle off. So this is the way I run it. You still have the interlock for the other way, which honestly is not necessary for glow planes, but you know, I just have it there anyways. So this is the way that I set it up. Okay, throttle cut is set. We can now add an idle up or a fast idle. Not everybody sets up a fast idle. Um, so if you don't, you're pretty much done and you're set up. If you do want a fast idle, let's go ahead and show you how to do it. So the way that I do it is with another trim. And a lot of people would use a flight mode. I don't like to use flight modes because I like to reserve flight modes for things like flaps or any other things that you want. And since this is only one thing that we need to change, there's no reason why you need to do it in flight modes. So I'm gonna return out of this and go back to the model menu. I'll go down to trim. And while we're in trim, I'll show you a couple of other things too. So 
Over here is the options for trim rudder. And if we scroll down, we can go all the way down to trim throttle. And here are the optional items for trim throttle. The first thing that we have is range. Um, range is if you don't have enough steps or if you don't have enough range in your, in your trim, because the trim right now is only 25% of the entire throw. So if you don't have enough, you can crank that number up if you want. For now, I'll leave it. For this example, I'll leave it. The next one, actually, I would change on all of them for my rudder, elevator, everything else is fine. So the steps, every sing single click of the uh, trim is what that is. And fine mode is really fine. So what I would actually do is go to medium or course. And a lot of times if I'm set up a new plane, I'll do medium just to double, you know, th that's a good like intermediate between the two. All right. So mode over here is where we're going to set up the fast idle. And I'm going to click over here. So right now the, the default mode is easy mode. I'm going to click over here and not choose independent per flight mode because that's a flight mode thing. I'm going to go to custom. Now, if you scroll down some more, because you went to custom, you have a new thing called behavior. And this is where you add your, your trim conditions that are not flight modes. So I'm going to go over here and let's add a new behavior. So the first item is the switch to activate it. So I'm going to click over here and choose my fast idle switch. Now let's just say that this switch I want to use as my low idle. Since this is a three position switch, the middle position and the down position would be fast idle. So what I do is obviously I go ahead and go to low idle, which is a switch up. And then I press and hold again and choose invert. And for those that don't understand what that is, if you take a look over here, it's now exclamation point SC up. So the exclamation point pretty much means not. So if I go to SC up, that means not in the up position. So the middle position or the down position. And we can confirm that by taking a look at it and see right now I'm in the up position. It is not bold. And then once I go to the middle position or the down position, it's bold. So in other words, this behavior is active when SC is in the down or middle position. So the next thing that we have is it says normal. Okay, I'm going to change this over to offset plus default. And what that means, offset plus default, default is your regular trim. And then the offset is this. So in other words, it'll add the two together. So to show you how this works, let's actually take a look at the output page. And let's go to throttle. And throttle cut is off. And OK, now we have a working throttle over here. And I'm going to go throttle down all the way. So with the switch in the, the, the low idle switch, I've got my low idle trim. So it's going to adjust that, and we'll adjust it to, say, 80%. Okay, so they're 80.2. Okay. Now, when I flip the switch to go to um, fast idle, it's at 80.2. And then now we can crank it up some more and let's make it 70. There it goes. So now I've got my low idle and my fast idle, all adjustable in the air or actually on the ground, but adjustable on the fly. Okay, I think that's it. We've adjusted the endpoints for the servo travel. We set up an adjustable um, low idle with trim. We set up a throttle cut for glow planes, and we set up a fast idle with this switch over here and trim modes. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment on this video or email me at Jose at freesky-rc.com. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a good night.